<clears throat> so if it's all right you can see my presentation right now yes um well linea thank you for uh, inviting me uh, last january at the stallion show in uh, in marienheim in holland uh, you asked me to give a presentation on the dutch uh, system and how we in our study book, um, uh, have our regulations and especially about uh, things like crone and, and preferent and what's it all, uh, what it means. Um, because I understand a lot of Swedish breeders um, have um, ponies from Holland or in their pedigrees, and sometimes um, there are questions. Well, I, I hope I can answer most of them. Um, I have prepared this presentation. Um, at first, I thought I will uh, I will talk about ten minutes, and it's it's all finished. But in the end, I heard I had an hour time, so I I uh, put some slides to it. So I uh, will see how many time it takes. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it gets boring. Um, I hope uh, you let me know, and if you have any questions, uh, please do ask them. Don't uh, hesitate and don't wait until the end. You can ask questions in the end, but if you have a question on a certain slide or a certain um, subject, please uh, let me know. You can just raise your hand and then we will know that uh, you want to speak. Yeah. Now I should be able to get the next. Yeah, well, this is... Um, what I saw on on Facebook, uh, on Facebook, what we are doing uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, first, to present myself, uh, my name is uh, Raymond Molekamp. I'm a um, Shetland pony breeder uh, with the prefix uh, Stapelo. My father started this um, in 1961. On the left top, you see me with my sister and brother. And on the right top, you see my grandparents. We had Shetland ponies uh, by that time already. In the middle of me and my wife at the European show in Denmark. And then you see some ponies. We bred Sonette, who's doing very well in Finland. Dana, who's now in the Shetland Islands. And beneath some stallions that we had. And I suppose at least Edmund van der Brouwerij should be known to the breeders in Sweden. He's been there for some years. Um, I'm a judge as well, and um, as you know, and I, right now, since two years, I'm the vice president of the Dutch society. Um, tonight, I will have these uh, subjects um, to discuss with you. Our Studbook Society, NSPS, it stands for Nederlands Shetland Pony, Stambouk, the Dutch society, um, some regulations, how we registrate our Shetland ponies. Uh, we work with a stinting certificate, how it works. Then we get next year the false, they are inspected. As a three-year-old, we get the studbook inspection. We have over our country, some 25 studbook shows every year. And I will discuss with you the predicates and something about the stallion assessment and shows and the breeding program. So that's a lot probably for an hour, but we will see. The society was founded in 1937. This year we celebrated our 85, 85th anniversary. Right now we have a bit over 2000 members and on the board we work with seven people and they are all volunteers. Um, twice a year with this general meeting of members, mostly in April and in October, where everybody who wants can come together and we discuss about the finance and uh, etc. All the, um, uh, there, there we elect uh, our judges and, and everything we have to discuss according to the society will be discussed on these meetings. We also have a member advisory council they come together uh, about four times a year where um, every um, breeding associating uh, association has one 
a member in this advisory council and they uh, can give advice to the board on any subject and they discuss all the the um, the they discuss the agenda of the general meeting as well and give advice on that as i said we have in holland in 25 regions we have breeding associations and these breeding associations they uh, organize the stud book societies and they do more but that's one of the main things that they are doing on the office in this small town of Steenderen, we have right now seven employees we have grown a little bit because since last year we, we also do the administration for other stud books and you see the races on your right the cold blood dutch cold blood trekpaard haflinger then we have the uh, Dartmoor, the Connemara, and the, in down you see the Groninger part. It's, it's a typical Dutch bread. It's not so famous and not so big society. But they decided to give their administration to our office because, well, I think we have a rather good working office. So right now we have um, three new uh, ladies working, and now we are with, with seven. Just for the shipments, we have every year a registration of about 4,000 mares that were covered, 2,700 foals, and the stud book shows about 5,500 entries. We have 550 active stallions and about 800 stud book entries. Just to give you an idea of what is happening and what we are working with. Our regulations are divided in, in, in four main regulations, the articles of association, as you have them, I guess, in Sweden as well. Our uh, stud book regulations, we have some house rules and inspection regulations. One of the main things in the stud book registration is that we divide all the shit and ponies in three categories, A, B, or C. And the normal uh, Shetland ponies will all be in category A and almost all the ponies that you will see in Holland and in Sweden as well will be of this category A. Uh, some are in B and they can eventually promote to A and in C we have the ponies who failed their veterinary inspection. Then we have this fall book in Dutch Feulen book where all the falls are registered and they get a yellow paper, I'll show you later. And we have this international book where especially the imported ponies um, uh, in their pedigree, their sires and dams, they will be in this international book. Well, breeding starts with um, a stallion and a mare. And then we have this stinting certificates. So uh, every breeder has to fill in a stinting certificate and it need to be at the office by the end of October. So that in the end of October, we know all the mares that are covered with which stallion. Nowadays, about 75% goes digitally and a few are still on paper. And every year, this will be about 4,000 stinting certificates. And the next year, we have 2,700 false registrations and some 600 without pedigree. So that's quite an, an amount. But it's very good to have this. So next year, we know which foal will be born. So when a foal is born, the breeder has to report this to the office, and it should be based upon this stinting certificate. Then we have 20 stud book full inspectors, which are mostly breeders of our society, and they visit all the breeders who have their foals. These people are trained by the Dutch government and have to do this task, a governmental task, which is delegated to the, the stud books. And it exists of checking the number of the, the mother, if it's the right mother, which is on the, on the paper, insert the chip, Registrate the color and the gender of the foal, and then they do it on the paper to the office. 
and we hope next year to have it all digitally. At the office, the ladies who work there will register this uh, fall in the, in the computer system and they check if the color uh, can be correct. Sometimes we see that um, a reported color cannot be correct according to the dam and the sire. So then we might have to do an extra DNA test. And then we produce the passport. And all the folks get this yellow paper. In our passport, we have this paper with the pedigree and the main characteristics. This is one of my own foals who was born last year. And you see here, it says Feulenboek, which means foal book. This one is a stallion, he's black. Uh, my name and the name of the pedigree, chip number. And we have this life number who's in the computer system of the society. And here it says this pony is not controlled, uh, is not being checked by a veterinary. And so this is yellow. Later on, you see when they are inspected as three-year-old, we get a blue one. So far, no questions? Okay. Then as a, when the mares are three-year-old, we get this stud book inspection. And we do that at about 28 locations throughout the country in springtime. We start next month. Um, and every year we have about 800 mares to be inspected. It will be in, in two parts. First, the veterinary inspection, according to the international standard where we check eyes and everything as you do in Sweden, I think. And then we have our stud book inspection. We have seven stud book inspector, uh, um, inspectors who do this uh, job. They are um, the more... Um, experienced uh, judges and who are um, uh, elected as to be inspector. They made the, they measure the height of the pony and they make this linear score as you probably have heard of. And that is this paper they fill in for every pony. Here they can fill in the name, the number, chip number, if it's a mare or a stallion or a gelding, the color, the date of the inspection, etc. And this is the most important. We have this 29 items on which the pony will be scored. And maybe it's a bit small to read, but I it's, it's in Dutch and I try to explain some um, important things for you. For instance, number four is the head the expression of the head. Will it be with much expression or with less expression? And it will be scored on a scale from one till nine. Sorry, one till nine. So if you have a normal head, the inspector will give a five. If the head will be a, big, uh, a bit big, probably he will give a seven. And when it's really huge, it should be nine. But when the head is nice looking, it will give a three or four. And really, really nice looking head, small head, nice ears on it, will probably have a two. And so we do for everything, for the neck, for the uh, length of the neck, the way the neck is put on the body. The, uh, is, is the neck uh, standing up or is it a, a bit uh, straight? Um, the, the withers, schofthoogte, eight is the withers. Is it high or is it low? When it's really, really high, we will give two or three. When it's low, you will give eight or seven. And everything given green is the, the green is the, the uh, scale where we want them to be in. So you can see, for instance, here three, behang is, uh, uh, I think in Swedish you say beharing. Um, we like to see a lot of bahari, a lot of mane and tail. So that's why the green is the good. Always five is, is correct. And we hope to see some a bit more to three or two or one. So every part of the, of the mare is scored this way. The back, uh, the uh, depth of the body, the cross, the front leg, behind leg, 
uh, the hooves, the legs, are they heavy, are they uh, not heavy? The correctness in, in walk, in front and behind, and then the walk, the, uh, are they easy moving? Do they have a lot of souplesse in the way they walk? And the same for the trots, where we give, we hope to have in movements, two or three. So this is what we produce. And in the, in the end, they give an overall number for type. And that is on a scale from uh, one to 100. And 80 is very good, or 85 is really very good. And they give a number for the type and for the movement. The veterinary fills in if the mare is a court, is it all right or not? And then we put on, will it be in the stud book in category A, B, maybe C when it's not veterinary checked or not, not veterinary, okay. And maybe it will not be in the stud book. Every now and then it happens, I think one or twice a year that the pony um, really does not fit in the, the type that we like, it's it's not a much uh, Shetland pony. Uh, it might be rather looking like a Welsh pony or anything like that, then it will not be into the stud book. So that's what we do with this linear score. And um, right now we have, um, it's, it's not all working in our computer system and that's uh, a pity, but uh, some years ago we had this, this system and we hope to get it back then we can put all these um, linear score uh, papers in the, in the computer. And we can see, for instance, from stallions, when they have 20 mares or 30 mares inspected on this way, you can see the stallion always brings uh, fillies with very good heads or mares with very good movements. So it's, it's, it's really nice to have these information on your stallions. And we hope to get it back soon whenever all um, uh, computer system works again. We have a question here from uh, Martin Skov in Denmark. Uh, yeah. He asks, I have a question about where can I find the linear score on my Dutch import ponies? Is, in, is it in the stud book? Yeah, it's in the stud book. When you are a member of the Dutch society, you have a login to our uh, computer system and on every mare you can see it. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's also provided on the day the inspection has been done to the, to the owner. So the owner has uh, this on paper mm -hmm. at home, but it's also okay. in, the, in the system. And if you have this login on our uh, computer system, you can see it on, on every mare. Uh, so if you've, if you've never been online on uh, the Dutch stud book, I can really recommend it to anyone because you tend to get obsessed with it and spend day and night uh, looking at ponies, pedigrees and, uh, and their scores. Um, so there's really a lot of information. And if you don't have an, um, login access yourself, then perhaps you can ask someone to just check an individual pony uh, if you want the linear score or other scores as well. We also have a question. How do you calculate the Bowen bulk score, which is the type and, and movement yeah. score? Yeah. Um, I think the Bowen bulk score is, is a bit like your five point system, but then brought back to two uh, points. So it's, it's, it's just um, uh, the impression that the stud book inspector has. He gives one uh, overall uh, um, uh, number for for type and one for movement and in your five point system you have two points for for movement for uh, walk and, and, and trot so uh, this is all very yeah put down together um and so we is, do not is there a, is there a description for what do you what you need to have to get a seven a 75 or no, 85 no. does it does is there any rule on what that should mean no, it's it's just an impression. We do not not uh, use it for uh, for anything. It's just nice to know that your pony has eighty or eighty five, and uh, when it is uh, sixty five or or seventy, uh, it's okay. And when you have fifty, then you think, well, should I breed with it? I don't know. Um, it's just this overall general uh, <laughs> impression. It's not more is than that. Can I also ask, because you use this for the stallions as well, 
Um, but as I understand it, there's a limit on, or at least there, there are no stallions approved below 70, 75. But is uh, there a rule for that? Or is it just that the stallion is just not good enough below those scores? Um, then then um, I have to look it up in, in, in our regulations. I think there is some rule that um, you may not uh, have below 50 or something or uh, uh, when 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 uh, when your type is is below 50 you will never be into this type book right so okay. then they won't, won't give a b or c then they give no mm -hmm. and i think it's it's below 50 but i'm not really sure i have to look it up but otherwise there there are no uh, restrictions or we don't we don't work with this it's just an overall impression are there any ponies who get a hundred? I've never seen. No, <laughs> I've seen I, I ninety, seen ninety, it. and I have seen ninety, but that's that's also uh, uh, no. It's I don't think we we have much nineties. No, maybe one yep. a year or something. Yeah, we have another question here. Uh, was the linear score on the stallions a part of the calculation of the total breeding index? Does it because uh, yeah. Uh, you use this as um, a measurement of the stallion's breeding, don't you? Or the for the offsprings? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's not not. Um, um, later on, on the end of my presentation, uh, I'll, I'll come back on how we do this with the uh, with the stallions. Mm. But the linear linear score is no part of this. It's no part of um, of 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 given an. Uh, uh, Oh, and uh, a lot, and uh, to, we don't use this for uh, for the, uh, the the breeding quality of the of the stallions. But if you look at a stallion's linear scores for the offspring, if you see many offsprings and their scores, then you can get an idea what he breeds. Yeah, and then in the in the early days, we had it very nice in the in the, in the computer, uh, and you could see on every uh, uh, part. On the head, on the on, on the on the mane and tail, and and the withers and everything, you could see how the stallion was breeding, and it was very nice to have. So it's it's uh, it's especially it's it's good for for breeders to get an impression uh, what the stallion does, and the more uh, studbook um, linear score he has, um, the more sure you are that he will give this beautiful head or this. Uh, good movers or this high with us so um yeah the, the, as a, as as an information for readers it's it's very good i, I think more questions nothing in the chat okay well then when when your um Mayor Australian has uh, this the step book uh, inspection, and he has uh, or she has the, the the linear score. Then she will be in the stamp book. Then the yellow card will be replaced by a blue one, as you see here. Sorry, I told you. And you see that we have in the stamp book category A. This is my own stallion that I own. Was bred by Laura Clump. Laura Clump. Um, and he's been in the in the stud book, and last year he got his first premium at the at the show. And we have this on on mares as well. So um, these are all with the blue card. They are inspected by the stud book, and they are inspected by a veterinary. So if you ever buy a pony with this blue card with it, and you can see it's stud book category A, you can be sure it's a good registered pony, veterinary correct, and everything. Yeah. Then um, I want to tell you something about our Premier Curingen, the Stadtbook shows in English. It's uh, a bit uh, different, as you will know. In uh, in Sweden, you have several shows. Um, we have these shows. They are all organized by the uh, Stadtbook, and we have delegated to the breeding associations. And you can go with your mare only once a year to a stud book show. You're not allowed to go a second time. 
and you are just allowed to go in your own um, in your own uh, area where you live. Um, as I said, it's 25 shows in uh, starting August till uh, end of September. Um, and the smallest show will have about 50 entries. And the biggest last year had 380. And they were busy two days to get this show done with uh, three couple of judges, six judges working together. The judges are all sent by the Stubbook Society. So um, you cannot invite a judge coming to your show. The Stubbook uh, is telling this judge is going to Friesland and this judge is going to uh, Holland and this one is going to Gelderland. We, uh, we try to change it every year so that not uh, uh, that, that the judges will come to different part of Holland and that breeders have every year a different judge. On these shows, once a year, you can get the Stadtbook premiums. And this is the Dutch word, Fulenpremie, the full premium. Um, so as a full, you can get either a premium or not. Same is for the one and two year olds, you can get an enterpremie or, or not, of a Twente premie or not. As an older mare, three year and older, you can get a first, a second, a third or no premium. And you get this once a year, as I told. This is a, a schedule with all the shows in Holland we had, these 25 shows with the breeding association. Yeah. Bommelerwaard is one of the biggest in the center of Holland. And on this uh, show, there were 110 three-year-old mares. Of them, 36 got a first premium, 67 got a second premium, seven a third, and none with no premium. And when you put this all together, you see that all in all in Holland, we had only three mares last year didn't get a premium at all out of 1,607. So 29% got a first premium, 60% got a second, and about 10% got a third premium on all the shows. The same for the, for the youngsters, the foals. We had over 1,000 foals at all the shows, and 65% of them got the premium. The yearlings, a bit more than 500, and 89% with premium and a two-year-old, a bit more than 583 got a premium last year. Then in the end, and you have heard of it, and I saw some of you uh, visiting already our national championship in, in Lundren, which we have every year at the end of the studbook season. Um, all the champions of these 25 shows are invited to come and to co compete to each other, which uh, pony will be the national champion. And then we also have this driven class where we choose our national champion. That much on shows. Is that clear to everybody? I hope. No questions. Then I will go on with the predicaten. I must say, I don't know the English word, but it should be something like predicat, but that's what a mayor or a stallion can earn. Um, you probably have heard of kroon and preferent. Then we have super preferent. These are three, which I will clear on the next slide, that uh, are important for breeding. All the others here, from ABOP, Elite, Cur, Prestatie, Ster, and Sport. They are all for um, Griffin and, and Ridden ponies. Crown, in English, crown. This is only for mares. And um, it's on what the mare achieved herself at studbook shows. To, be, uh, to become a crown mare, 
see uh, will have at least two registered falls. It does not matter if they are good and if they are price winning and if they have a premium or not, but she should have at least two registered falls. So mares who do not breed will never become crown. Then herself, she should have two times a first premium or four times a second premium or one first and second premium. And here you see one of my own mares, Mayor Corning in. She is crown, you see it on the top and also the crown who is printed on the paper. And you can see she has a full premium. Then as a yearling, she got no premium. As a two-year-old, a 20 premium. And then in line four times a second premium. And last year she became crown. And you can see this on the, the black, on the, on the blue paper. And I think this is something like you have in Sweden, but then a bit different. Uh, preferent is also seen uh, much on pedigrees of Dutch uh, ponies. And preferent is for mares and stallions. Crown is just for mares. Preferent is for mares and stallion that have outstanding breeding quality. Uh, for mares, they have to have at least four offspring, which have contributed with points. Only when a mare dies on a younger age, younger than 10, then three offspring can help a mare to the preferent prefix. These offspring should bring together 25 points. And when you want to be super preferent, then you have to have at least 100 points. And the points are in the figure on the next slide. And only the highest points on each offspring counts. And you see for preferent mare, when, uh, when a mare brings a foal and the foal gets a premium, one point. And also for when for the cold foal. An enter premium is just one point. You see, with the 20 premium, you get two. But then when the mare gets older and she gets a second premium, you get six. Or with the first premium, you get eight. When your mare has, for instance, one time a first premium and two times a second premium, only the eight points count. The highest note will count. And when the mayor gets crown, you will get 12 points, elited if 12, and so on. So all these points you have to count on, on, on one mayor. So if, if, if a mayor has, uh, uh, for instance, uh, four foals produced and two of them have been crowned, you have 20 points, and two of them have just a second premium, you have 12 points, 12 and 20 is. 32 and the mayor will be crowned, uh, will be preferent. That's how it works. And the same on this line with sons, cold falls, and stallions, they have these points. And when you want to have a super preferent mayor, you have to have many falls, and because all in all, you want to have 100 points at least to be super preferent. So that is very seldom. There are not many ponies. I don't know the exact number, but I think right now, uh, living mares in Holland, which are super preferent, there are maybe not more than 10, maybe 15, I don't know exact, but not more than that will, will have it. So that's, that's really good. Also a stallion can get preference. And then he, should be a living stallion, which had at least once a premium, and he must have a license for life. So not uh, so all. Uh, it's it's always an an older stallion, and he has to have one hundred points with his sons, and one hundred fifty points with his daughters. Or, when he's not so good with his sons, seventy two. But then he has to have more points with his daughters, two hundred. 
And also preference can be awarded to stallions who have died and have got a license for life at a maximum eight years ago. It's a rule that is added to this some years ago. And the points for a stallion are on this slide. And you see the second premium is just with the mares, the same six, first premium eight, crown is 10. So it's almost the, uh, the same points. And with licensed sons, they can't get these points. So for a stallion, it's also very difficult to become preferent. Uh, stallions who are preferent um, are mostly all the stallions are stallions who are uh, who have done much covering and who have produced much false. Last year in January, we had a show of two preferent stallions uh, out of the, the same reading. Uh, and they are also in the, in the magazine. You've seen them probably. Uh, Fireball of Van de Van Gelderen. Um, and now I have to look it up, what the name of the other one. Fireball and the betters, help me. Enrique, sorry. <laughs> Enrique and, and Fireball of Gelder. They are both uh, rather young stallions and they, they have become preferent already because they, they have done a lot of breeding and produced a lot of foals. But excellent. So crone, crone and preferent are, are, are the most important uh, prefixes you can get on, on, on your breeding mares and stallions. Then we have some um, that you can get on ridden or and, and driven. And uh, there are more of it, and I don't know if you are interested in it, but uh, if you are interested in, in this, but I will tell you uh, a bit of it. You can do this uh, test, ABOP test. It can be ridden or driven, and you can get a double A, A, or B. If you want to get this elite predicate for mares, you have to be crone or preferent, and you have to do this test with an A or an double A. And cur is for stallions, and stallions they also do have to have some premiums for themselves, so they have to be good looking. They have to have license for life, at least two licensed sons, and two first premium daughters, and also this driven or reading test with A or double A. So for salience, cure is rather difficult and, 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 and it's a sort of all rounder. You have to be good looking yourself. You have to be breeding good and you have to do a, a test. And then you can get cure. And this year we had this uh, chestnut uh, salient galant who was cure. So on um, ridden and, and driven ponies, you can become prestatie. It's for geldings, stallions, and mares. Also this A or double A for this test. You have to do a spot test L with minimum of 180 points. And I must say, I'm not really familiar with this. So I, if you have a difficult question, uh, I cannot answer this because I'm not so into the ridden and, and driven as... Uh, I must say. So you can get this prestatie. You also can get ster. It's a sort of preference for sport ponies. You have to have excellent performance offspring. And you get a sport predicate. And that is for any registrated Shetland pony. So even if it's not good looking and not really a Shetland looking type, but is good in ridden or driven, you can get this sport predicate. How common is this? It's not so common, um, but then I must say um, I'm more a breeder than, than, than somebody who uses his, his ponies. And we have people in Holland who are not uh, really into breeding, but more into ridden and, and driven. They know more about this and uh, they, um, um, they know about this. Um, I don't know the exact number of how many uh, Stair ponies and how many cure we have on a, on a stallion we don't have much cure I don't 
I think maybe only five or 10 in, in Holland. So that's, it's, it's really not, not common. And it's elite for mayors. We have some more, but I, I cannot tell you the, the numbers. But it's it's not it's not not really really much. So if you have an elite mayor, it's 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 something special, yeah. And for the breeders, uh, you probably won't see this much on your paper of the Dutch uh, stallions and mares. But it, it's good thing that we have it, and it's uh, also very good. And I think we we have to promote the use of the of the Shetland ponies more and more because it's, it's very good for young people and, and children to ride and to drive with ponies. And, and it's, it's also good for the, for the stud book and the overall interest in, in Shetland ponies. So I think it's, it's a good thing that we, we have it. Then the, the next uh, little chapter of my presentation is about the stallion assessments. Um, and we start with the young stallions who will be presented for license for the first time. Every year we have this in December. Uh, and we have four ways to look at the stallion. At first we have uh, give a quality on the, on the pedigree. It can be A, very interesting. It can be B, C or D. B is very good, C is rather good and D is sufficient and on D when your pedigree is not really top you have to have a really good um, exterior really good feet really good with us uh, and that kind of things and last year we had one stallion who was licensed with his D on his pedigree um, so at first we look at, at the pedigree is it interesting to have this stallion and for, for instance when we have already 10 stallions out of the same combination or almost same combination from uh, Sire and them, uh, then he won't get an A because we have already much. So it's it's looking, uh, we have to look, will this new stallion be interesting for breeders to, to breed with? Can I, can I ask then, uh, a good pedigree, is it based on, on whether the parents have uh, first premiums, or or is it because it is an interesting pedigree, or what is a good pedigree? Yeah, that, that's um, um, that's that's uh, a bit difficult to to answer because there are not strict regulations on this. It's it's also um, a bit of a feeling that the the judges have, the the judges and the uh, uh, um, and the veterinary come together. And they decide this. So, as a stud book uh, on the board, we we have no influence on, on this. It's it's uh, what the, what the judges do. Um, but the interesting is indeed uh, are, is is uh, is the mother and the grandmother and the over grandmother a good breeding mare? Is she, for instance, preferent? Then she will be higher uh, awarded. Um, uh, are there already licensed sons out of this mother line, yes or no? Uh, is the father good breeding? And is, is the combination um, uh, interesting? And do we have already more of these bloodlines or is it not common to have it? Um, for instance, I can tell you the Swedish stallion, this car gardens uh, we had last year, he got an A on his pedigree because of he was um, this his mother line was new in Holland it was uh, something that we we didn't have so that's how how the judges look at it we have a question here um, mm -hmm. can the mayor owners see these judgments anywhere afterwards they they get um, on 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 um, on every stallion you get a paper how the judges have have have. Uh, uh, have judged your stallion and you get on every uh, single item you get uh, points you get the veterinary uh, in inspection and you also get the the points on your pedigree will it be an a and b a c or a d but it's only for the stallion owners it's not in the stud book anywhere or no 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 it's it, it's it's just um what they what they give to the three-year-old uh, stallions who are at the at the show 
Um, so it's it's just for these Italian owners, yeah. And this is something um, which is uh, new this year and, and last year. In the years before, they just got uh, points. They got six, seven, eight, and sometimes they got seven plus, and sometimes seven plus plus. And now we have changed it in in in, in these four letters. Yeah. So this is the, the pedigree uh, part of the of the judgment. Then we have this veterinary check done by the veterinary of the University of Utrecht with some colleagues. Then we have this stud book inspection, the same as we have with the mares when the three-year-old with this linear score on it. And then the judges have three viewings in December. So some stallions in the in the first round they they pass and get to the to the second viewing and then to the third viewing and when you pass the third viewing then you have your license and in every viewing judges can say sorry we don't like you and you won't get your your license it's on uh, three viewings uh, some years ago it these three viewings were done in one day and now we have chosen to have it in, in two days. For instance, on a Thursday and on a Saturday. And then on a, a Thursday and, uh, and Wednesday, we had the first viewing of all the stallions. And the ones who get to the second viewing, they had to come back on the, the Saturday. Then when your stallion is licensed, you can get a selection licensed. There are all the, the stallions who have passed their third viewing. But if you're not um, allowed to come to the, the third viewing, you can also ask to have a basic license, a basis licensee. Uh, there are not much breeders who do it, but you can. And um, then you have to have a good veterinary check and your stud book inspection have to be okay. And with this basis licensee, basic license, you can uh, breed as well. And all the foals and the offspring will be uh, judged as the same as of uh, a stallion with selection licensee. So it's, um, it's, 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 it's done because of European rules that we could not uh, turn down uh, stallions, for instance, from uh, uh, other countries. So they were uh, into this basic license, but as I told you, it's it's not very popular with, with Dutch breeding. And a lot of breeders say, well, basic is, is B quality and we, we don't like it. But for instance, last year we had uh, a chestnut stallion uh, who has promoted himself because of very good offspring from a basic license into selectie license, Ime van Nieuwen Amsen. Maybe you've heard of him. So um, when you start with a basic license, it's no problem. You can breed with it and you get your selection license in the end as well. I have a question oh, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about the, the uh, judging of the pedigree. Um, how do the judges decide about the pedigree points, pedigree letter of the ponies if they are imported from the UK? Where in the UK, they don't have any assessment of results to tell about the quality of the ponies in the pedigree. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's it's um, probably more or less of a, of a feeling, and 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 um, we, uh, as a studbook society, we try to get all the the information that we have, and uh, we are very lucky with your Swedish system, so we can see on the internet uh, from, from Sweden, a lot of information on, on how the pony has been doing uh, in breeding and in showing. But from other countries, the, the, the information is, is not so nice organized. So we have to, to get it. Um, but in the, um, indeed from um, UK and other countries, uh, it's sometimes difficult to get good uh, information. So we have to do with the information that we have. And um, we are lucky to have some judges who also um, have been judging abroad every now and then um, on the on the panel for the for the stallion uh, inspection, so they know some of the of the foreign breeding, but we don't know everything on 
UK stallions who might come to Holland. But if I understand you correctly, you also might give a high point because the pony has a rare pedigree. Yeah, that is one of the things that we like. But um, when it's, it's rare and we don't like it at all, then <laughs> I will not get an A. <laughs> and okay. and that is that that is not into strict re regulation. That's also it's the same as, as a judge. When do you give a first premium or or, or a second? It's it's also not in strict regulations. It's a sort of of feeling, and I think uh, with this is 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 more or less the, the same. We have another question as well. Do you um, do you can you accept a lower quality? exterior point or, or judgment if a pedigree has for example lots of marsh woods in it or other interesting um, bloodlines yeah yeah we do and um, i have this magazine from last uh, week uh, with the stallion show next to me um, for instance um, this this swedish stallion we had last year Scar Gardens Darcy is uh, by up to date. And um, the judges have given him an A, as I told, because of his very nice pedigree and a very good mother line. And you could see that the mother line was breeding in Sweden very well. So uh, that's why he got an A. But to his um, exterior, they, ha they had some uh, re remarks. So he was almost in the end of his class. He got a second premium. And uh, yeah, there were some some remarks. They um, he was not not top quality on his uh, exterior. The judges thought, but still they have licensed him because of his nice pedigree. So he's he's one of these examples how we work with it. More questions? Nothing else in the chat. Uh, I will. Also, leave you in a couple of minutes, so I will hand over to Kalot. Uh, well, yeah. We get uh, a few more slides, and then we'll meet in here. Yeah. So, um, this on our young stallions. When they got the, the the license, they must be presented in January for a premium, and they must have a DNA test, and they must have their semen examination. And to get your selection license, you have to pass a certain amount on your semen examination. On your basic license, it does not matter. If your semen is not really good, you still have, you can have your basic license. If you're not passed with your young stallion uh, for license, you can have a second opinion. We call it a herkeuring. Then we have a panel of three other judges and they will have a second opinion on your stallion. And every year we have one or two or three stallions who get their selection license through Hercule. This year we had two who indeed got, uh, first they were turned down, but with a second opinion, they got their, their license. Then when you have your selection license, your license stallion, you're obliged to be presented in the first and second year after licensing. So all the young stallions who have got a license this year, they have to be presented next year and the year afterwards. And if you're not, you might lose your license. And then in January, we have these championships in every size. And then in the end, our national champion. Then on the stallion shows and last chapter, that I will go through with you is our breeding program. And that's the most difficult part, probably. And I think more and more Dutch breeders think it's 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 difficult, the, the system that we have. So we discuss it uh, soon in these breeding uh, meetings. The purpose, the objective of this is, is to have a quality selection based on offspring. So that um, if, a if a licensed stallion is not breeding well, he can be taken out of the, the system and he can lose his, his license. But this whole system has been adjusted, has been changed over the years. We had a change in 2019, we had a change in 2018. 
in 2006 and in 30 in 93 and he is saying 22 this must be 2005 sorry that's a mistake so it has been changed some years the latest version now is from 2019 it's four years old and there we have um, the stallions has, have to go through a first and a second phase before they can be definitive they can have their license for life and as I told you, you can also promote from basic to selection license as this email from you and Amsen did last year. So your stallion is, uh, is licensed as a three year old, you start uh, covering some males and you get false. Then you have to show to finish your first phase at least 15 falls, and you may take some years for it. It does not have to be in one year. At least 15 for seven yearlings, seven enters, and four two year olds at stud book shows. You have to show them. At least 20% of the born cold foals should be presented, and at least 40% of all the filly foals that are born out of your stallion should be presented. If you don't get these numbers, then you get a warning, but next year you have to make it. Otherwise, you can lose your license. From all the filly falls that are shown next year, 50% have to be shown again as a yearling. And from all yearlings next year, 50% have to be shown as a two year old. So as a stallion keeper, it's important to have an eye on the offspring of your stallion. And if the breeders will go and will take them to the stud book shows. With all these false yearlings and two-year-olds at the shows, we give them numbers on their premiums. If they get a premium, yes or no, and we give them an index. And the index should be, and it's very, it, it looks a bit mathematic. So if you, um, if I lose you, then uh, it's not your fault. It's very difficult to understand probably. But for the minis, small side to uh, this minis, you have to have this index 5.5. The colored ponies who are bigger than minis should have also this 5.5. But when you're black, a black stallion, you should have a six. Or when you're a black standard size stallion, you should have a 6.5. Because normally the standard size blacks will get better premiums than the minis. So it's into this index. And once, if you have done this, if you have these false yearlings, seven yearlings, four two year olds, etc., books, they have done well, they got a premium. For instance, you have a black stallion and you have the six, then you get to the second phase. If not, you can wait another year and then you can get it. In the end, this is what uh, if you don't uh, succeed to pass this index, then you will lose your license and you will go back to your basic license. But if you go on to the second phase, then you have also to have, um, you have to show your other mares at step book shows, at least seven of them. And at least seven should get the stud book inspections. And then also got this quality index. And as this, what is written down, total index, you have to have a, with your youth and your older mares, you have to have 11.5 or for the standard blacks, 30.5. And to make it even more interesting for those who want to know all the details, how do we get these numbers? That's this mathematical um, thing you have to put down. And um, if you really want to, to know, um, you may ask me afterwards, it's, it's getting too far, I think to uh, put it all right now. But um, the main thing is to, to know that uh, our young stallions have to produce foals. They have to be, be shown at stud book shows. Some of them have to get premiums and then your stallion can get to the second phase and in the end get his license for life. And if he, see, if he is not good breeding or he does not show enough youngsters and mares it shows he might lose his selection license and go back to basic license. 
and it's not much. Every year we may have two or three stallions who do not pass. So let's say 95% of all the stallions do pass this. Some in a very few years, and some take longer years to get this. But in the end, most of them will pass this system. Right. That's uh, the end of my presentation. Yes, uh, Raymond. Hi, Charlotte hello. here. Good to see hello. you again. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello. Um, we have a question here. Um, how many stallions in percentage get licensed for life? Um, in the end, I think about 90%. I don't know the exact number, but in, the, in this range, only a few stallions who do not pass this, this examination of their offspring. Okay. And uh, for instance, these stallions, Enrique and Fireball, who got their uh, preference last year, they were rather young stallions. So they were very good. And at, at a young age, they got their license for life and be, afterwards became a preference. But some stallions who are even older, who, who are maybe 15 years or something, and they get their uh, license for life only by that age, if they produce less falls or not so good looking falls. All right. Um, I think we had another question earlier as well, where the, the question was, how do you calculate on offsprings which have been exported to another country? Um, they um, do not count. If we know they are exported, um, they are out of the Dutch system and they, they do not count anymore. Uh, but we do not always know. Some are exported without the stud book uh, office knowing. And um, they still count. So for instance, if you have um, three foals and four of them are exported and, and, and uh, exported, and the stud book does not know, the stud book will say you have to show 50% of your four falls, so we want to see two falls. But you don't have them anymore because they live in Germany or in Belgium or in Sweden. So that might be a problem. So yeah, that is uh, also for, for breeders. If you export your fall or yearling, um, let, let the stud book society know. Yeah, but even if they know, the result they get in another country still doesn't count no, towards no, the parents. No. No. The result that in, a, in, a, in another country is never uh, taken into account, no. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any other questions? Uh, either if you want to write them in the chat or if you want to mention them yourself, that's good as well. Then you can just raise your hand. I know Raymond has been really clear, but maybe there are still some questions. <laughs> and I think it's, it's uh, as I told, it's, it's a bit of a, of a difficult system with all these um, falls and, 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 and yieldings that you have to, to show. So more and more breeders in Holland think it's, it's, it's too difficult and, and we do a lot of work and for, for what? And, and is it useful? So that's uh, the question that we uh, will discuss with each, each other the, the, uh, over the coming years and the, and the coming months. So it, it might turn out that we um, want, to, want to change this system in a more um, simple system. But I don't mm. know, it's, it's up to our Dutch breeders what they want. Yeah, I mean, we can at least, just a parallel in Sweden, we see that uh, there are many stallions now and they don't get that many mares each mm -hmm. of them. So we don't have as much statistic uh, information either um, today. I see a few raised hands here. Uh, Anne Pagma, do you want to ask your question, please? I think you're on mute. Linnea, maybe you can unmute Ann. Mm, hon är unmuted, men det, det verkar som att det inte funkar. Men skriv din fråga i chatten då, Ann, så tar vi den där. 
Okay, um, let's move to Lotta. You have a question. Yes, uh, hello. I wanted to know if your judges are they specialized in Shetlands or do they do other uh, other ponies as well as Shetlands judging? I mean, mm -hmm. I understand. Um, they are all uh, uh, um, specialized in in Shetland ponies, um, so they are. Uh, um, um, uh, trained and raised uh, by the Dutch society and they have to be chosen by our members to be a judge so every three years you have once again you have to be chosen to be judged for the next three years but I know mm -hmm. we have also uh, a lot of judges who also judge on other breeds okay. and if you want to uh, get your license as a judge in Holland you have to have an examination by the Dutch state. And in this examination, you do not only judge Shetland ponies, but you have to judge at least two other breeds as well. That could be show jumping horses, or that could be Connemaras or Hufflinger or whatever. But at least three breeds you have to, to judge to get your license by okay. the Dutch state. Thank and you. I know, and I know lots of them uh, do uh, judge at other breeds as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And that's actually a recommendation here in Sweden as well, that the more horses, ponies you see, mm -hmm. um, the better off you are judging any, any of the races, really. Uh, we have a question now from Anne Pagmar. Um, you as a breeder, what do you think is the most important, important thing with a stallion that you want for your own breeding? What are you basically looking for in a stallion? Mm -hmm. Me uh, as a breeder. <laughs> Um, Share your secrets now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, personally, I think it's it starts with with pedigree. I think that is the the base uh, upon which you you are breeding. So to me, that that is 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 very Im important. Um, and then I, I like to have some some marsh wood in it. Um, on the other hand, I, I um, myself, I, I, I try to, to change my, my stallions every few years, so I can, I can change my breeding a little bit where I want it. For instance, if I have now a stallion which produces foals with very uh, good movements, but big, big heads, for instance, then after a few years, I would like to have a stallion which with a beautiful head and which can bring that to, to my stud. Um, so I, um, I try to, to, to breed with, with young stallions and with stallions who will fit to my, my mares. But first of all, yeah, uh, pedigree is very important. And, uh, and, and then I want to see some weight and, and substance uh, as I have learned from Dougal Dick from Trancy Stud which he always said, certain ponies should have weight and, and substance and you, you may never um, lose the real breed characteristics. So um, every now and then I see ponies who are uh, uh, a bit light of bone, which, which uh, uh, are, are, tend to be more like other breeds and, and, and the really truly Shetland type that is, that is important to have. I hope that that is enough for an answer. Uh, I think so. Otherwise, um, please feel free to uh, come back. Mm -hmm. I see uh, Christina, you've uh, raised your hand. Go ahead, please. Yes, I have. Uh, when you counted up these uh, demands for your breeding, what about color? What about color? What do you color? mean? Color, yeah. yeah. Do you prefer black ones, colored ones? Me, myself, as a breeder. Yeah. Um, we used to have um, uh, over the, the last uh, 20 years most, mostly black mm. because we liked it. But um, as you probably can see uh, behind me, mm -hmm. there is um, nowadays one uh, uh, bay mare and one cray mare as well in, uh, in, uh, at our stud. So we like to produce uh, some, some color as, as well. Mm. 
uh, but but mainly over the DS we we always had black. But but it's um, and especially this this brown this this bay color I like a lot, and we were happy to to uh, to purchase this mare two years ago, and we uh, we had a very nice cold fall out of her. her. And next year we hope to have uh, another beautiful bay fall again. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? No. no. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question from Jeanette Stark. Uh, can a mare or stallion get a merit in the Netherlands if she or he is exported? If the stallion or mare still have offsprings in the Netherlands? Um, I think this um, merit can only... Um, oh, it's a specific question. I think you have to be at least a member of the Dutch society to get this. You have to be. Uh, you have to be a member. You can ask to to the office if you can can get this 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 merit this, this crown or, or preferent or whatever, um, and you have to pay for it. So you have to be a member at least. So for, I see. Uh, um, another participant has actually answered yes. <laughs> so I'm I'm sure they have their own experience probably. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And can you also, I was wondering about the, the stallions in the breeding program, can they get a license for life, even if they've been exported? Um, or we go to the next phase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. I, because... Um, I never, I, I never heard of it that 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 the stallion who was exported uh, got this again. So I, I, I must say no. But thinking of it, maybe it could be. But I think it, it, it has never happened. And once again, you have to be a member of our society to get this done. And then I don't know if, um, as far as I know, it's never been done. Um. The uh, person who answered yes on the previous question um, added now, I bought a mare in, in Holland. She only had one registered foal in Holland. I exported her first foal back to Holland and then she got her croon predicate. Yeah. yeah. So she mm. had to have these two foals on the Dutch uh, system. Yeah. 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 We have. And... Sorry, yeah, um, Ben uh, Falk, he added uh, Zelsam van Hellersword mm -hmm. did as well. Okay. Yeah. There's not a lot of ben. knowledge on this meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ben ben uh, lives uh, a few years longer than I, so he's, he, he knows a bit more than I do. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? This is a fantastic opportunity to better understand the Dutch system. Um, if I'm correct, this this presentation will be uh, will be recorded, and, and and people can can look it up uh, afterwards. Yeah. If there might be any questions, uh, you might ask me to. Uh, mail or whatever, no uh, no problem afterwards. Excellent. We will put it on, on our YouTube channel as well. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing more actually. I want to add one more picture because I think it was uh, rather difficult and it was a lot of information and in the end it got a bit mathematic, but I think one of the most important things in Shetland breeding is you always should have fun in breeding. And that's what I want to express with this, uh, <laughs> with this picture, <laughs> my wife and I. Uh, fun is the most important thing to have uh, with your Shetland ponies. I think we all agree on that. It's You're really absolutely. important to keep that focus. Yeah. 
It doesn't look like you need the brush, though. Uh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I think uh, my father, he does not live anymore, but he, he never would catch his uh, good points on, on bra Bahari. Because <laughs> my brother and I, we have the, the same uh, problem. <laughs> Good thing you have other qualities. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, mainly now we see a lot of thank you so much and uh, really nice to hear about your experience and your knowledge. And uh, it seems like everyone has been really, really pleased um, having a chance to learn more mm -hmm. about the Dutch system. Uh, I'm not sure we can say we're experts, but at least we have a good basic of information now that we can refer to, which is really, really good. Okay. So well, thank, thank you so it much. Was, it was fun doing this and uh, I hope you, you have learned something of it. And, and if there are any questions, uh, please let me know in future. Thank you very much. Thank Linnea, you so do much. you wanna? No, I'm, I'm, I think you did well there. And, and uh, thank you so much, Raymond. And it's been a pleasure to have you talk for us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and thank to everyone. Thank you to everyone who participated. And uh, as I said, we will put this on our YouTube channel if you want to to see it again. Okay, thank you for tonight then. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Raymond. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.